Hey, it's Kaji Sensei here, and tonight I figured we'd have a little bit of fun. So, I was watching Juniper's stream a little while back and saw a particular segment that, uh, live that ended up becoming the clip, She Commits Food Crimes, and <laughs> honestly, as someone who likes all of the components involved, that sounded pretty darn good. So, here we are. We are going to go ahead and try and do it live on video here, and we'll catch a real reaction, won't we? So, we've got our uh, mother chan here, and uh, decided to go for the gold, because heck, we're gonna do this, may as well go for the good stuff, right? Um, we are making a couple of modifications here, so instead of the water, we're actually using beef broth. And since the store only had the unsalted stuff, we'll probably throw in a dash of soy sauce to make up for that. Although I guess technically water doesn't have salt in it, or at least the water you should be using for this, but yeah. Um, and then of course, per the instructions, we've got you know, a thing of Jif, um, crunchy because I don't keep creamy in stock. Crunchy is the only stuff worth eating. Um, got sriracha here and a half bottle. It should be plenty, hopefully. Um, then ponzu in place of the uh, lemon juice and plenty of garlic. So, I believe that's everything that she mentioned in the video here, so let's go ahead and get started with boiling our beef broth here. Okay, and I guess part of the question here really is when to add peanut butter. Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and throw that in. Well, if we put it in at the same time we drop the noodles in there, I guess that will probably work. Well, I guess while we're doing that, I can go ahead and share a story of a food crime of my own here. Um, also involving instant ramen, interestingly enough. Um, you see, back when I was in college majoring in Japanese, I, um, you know, I'm one of those people where if I drink coffee, it brings me down instead of um, uh, keeping me alert. So as a result, while I had a coffee maker, um, it was virtually always used for nothing but um, you know, boiling water. Uh, occasionally I'd go ahead and get creative with it, like I boiled eggs in there a couple of times uh, by just you know putting the egg in there and then running uh, boiling water over it. But generally speaking, it was some uh, form of just simply boiling the water um, and then using it for some other purpose. Well, uh, lo and behold, one day I decided to actually make coffee with it. But of course, habit, um, you know, I wasn't using the putting the filter for anything, so, you know, I forgot to empty the filter. Uh, three days go by, I'm coming back from class, I'd missed breakfast that morning, and Quite honestly, I had probably been up all the night before on top of that. So I get back, I am ravenously hungry. And it's like, you know, it's all I can do to wait for the water to come out of the, th out of the coffee maker, much less wait three more minutes for it once I put it in the cup ramen. Well, I take a look at it, and it's about that color of that beef broth I just poured in the pot. I had just reused three-day-old coffee beans. And I was so hungry at that point that it's like, you know what, the hell with it. <laughs> uh, I went ahead and just threw it right into the pot there, uh, right into the cup. Uh, you know, waited my three minutes, just barely, it dug right in. And to my surprise, the um, I guess something in the coffee just reacted well with the MSG and the um, instant ramen, I guess. But it actually made all the flavors stronger in a good way. <laughs> so. Um, interestingly enough, that kind of became an intentional thing ever after. Um, I would just go ahead and brew a cup of coffee properly with fresh beans going forward. Um, and I would use that to make my instant ramen ever after because it was far more interesting than just simply using plain water. Um, which is probably the reason why we're using beef broth now. Although, hmm. I'm starting to wonder if you could put beef broth through a coffee maker, but I'm guessing that could go really, really wrong. Uh, 
Now, in spite of our staring at the pot here while singing, we actually are starting to get a little bit of steam, at least, finally. Oh, 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 starting to hear it boil, starting to hear it boil. Alright, wait, wait, wait. Right, so we were saying before, we were thinking about doing the peanut butter before. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a good scoop full here. So, let's see, we've got Jeff right here. We've got probably way too much there, but we're gonna run with it. And just so you can tell that I'm not cheating here. Let's see, it is in the broth. The broth is boiling, and we are mixing it up to break it down a little bit. Smells good. Uh, I've got confidence in this. Right. A little bit of soy sauce to make up for the salt that we're not, that we don't have in that broth. Garlic. Ooh, we got a good boil there. Yeah. Never have too much garlic. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing, is kind of been my motto in life, so uh, yeah. I know my lesson on this one, I'm going to save that for last. A story I'll share in a moment. Okay, so we're putting the noodles in. Three minutes on the noodles. Okay, let's set our kitchen timer here. So I was saying we learned our lesson before on the adding sriracha to boiling stuff here. The reason I say that is we used to have a housemate here many, many years ago who, um, whenever he made macaroni and cheese, he would go ahead and uh, put Tabasco sauce right in the water as he was boiling the noodles to try and infuse the noodles. Um, which apparently, you know, isn't that bad, at least in theory. Um, it was certainly good enough he did it on a regular, obviously. Um, however, how to say this? Due to the chemistry of everything here, and densities, boiling points, and so forth, the boiling point of Tabasco sauce is much lower than that of water. And so, or at least the capsaicin oils in it anyway. So, as a result, what ended up happening was he essentially um, pepper gassed the entire house. Um, not that he noticed it because he was, you know, so used to this that it just didn't phase him at all. But everybody else in the house was feeling the burning in their eyes and so forth. And uh, yeah, um, someone came down and informed him, you know, what was, and once they learned what was going on, I was like, yeah, don't do that ever, ever, ever again. So, since I don't want to be inadvertently committing the same crime there, I do have a couple of limits you know, regarding personal safety and onions. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are going to add that as a finishing touch. Still add a whole lot of it for Jennifer's recommendation, but it's going to be at the very end. See, yep, we got it going good wrong there, good boil going. Alright, and that is time, so we take that off. Okay. Uh, we've 
we've got about, you know, an Eisenhower half dot, Eisenhower silver dollar sized bit less. Run another equal amount. Uh, it's probably going into adventurously spicy territory, but again, that suits me fine. <coughs> so, mix it up and serve, eh? Yeah, so. Yeah, so here is the finished product. So, yeah, like I said, actually looks pretty good to me. So, with that, well, let's dig in. Yeah, so. A little hard getting the noodles out of there, so, you know, but <clears throat> no, that's actually pretty good. And yeah, she wasn't kidding about using a lot of sriracha there. I, like I said, put in you know, several tablespoons, we'll put it that way. And uh, <laughs> now, because the peanut butter actually was probably doing something to otherwise dull the sriracha here, so you kind of needed to help bring it back, I guess. lips start to feel a little bit numb but I'm not sure if that's the heat or the stuff in the thing here oh. got a little bit right on the back of my throat well, I might round this out just a little bit Let's see if adding a little bit of bulldog sauce in there just to add a little bit of sweet to it helps doesn't hurt it. Definitely need a little bit of water for all that sriracha we put in there. Starting to run a little low up noodles here. May have to start attacking the broth before too long. So you can see we are in fact legitimately eating it, making progress here. You gotta be very careful when blowing on this because otherwise, you know, it flips a uh, little bits of a uh, little drops of the water flying up and you know, get that in your eyes. It's not gonna be a fun evening. <laughs> I guess we'll go ahead and call it about there. I, this stuff is surprisingly filling compared to the usual stuff here. I'm starting to get full as it is, so. But as you can see, we've gotten a good way down, almost to the point of just having the broth left. So since a lot of places say, you know, don't worry about finishing the broth, we're going to go ahead and, and take it there. But yeah, Jennifer, um, now, <laughs> this is a really fun experiment here. I really enjoyed it, so you can add another one to your uh, like column there. Now, a great recipe, great idea, and if you have any other adventures in ramen here, I'm definitely curious to hear about them. <laughs> All right, have fun. Bye.